It may sound crazy, but taking tiny little breaks during your practice session and closing your eyes and literally doing nothing could seriously improve the results that you get from your practice. And we're potentially talking 20 times faster here. Hey friends, Mark Morley Fletcher here, and I'm gonna give you some specific instructions for how you can do this in a bit, but I don't expect you just to believe me on such a big claim without any proof. So I want to talk a little bit about the very good science that's behind this first. So I'm specifically talking about a study that came out this year in Cell Reports, which is a highly respected scientific journal, and I'll put a link to the study in the description below. And the study got people to practice playing a sequence of notes on a keyboard. So this is great. It's actually a study directly on music, which is really good for us. And the people who did this were put into one of two groups. So one group just practiced continually throughout the study. And the other one practiced in a cycle of 10 seconds practice and then 10 seconds rest and then 10 seconds practice and 10 seconds rest and so on. And these rest gaps that they took were just completely idle time where they let their mind drift. They're not trying to do anything else in that time. And the surprising result is that the people who took the breaks actually learned faster than those that didn't, even though they were physically doing the practice for only half the amount of time. Where it gets really interesting, though, is when the scientists looked at what was going on inside the brains of the people who were taking those breaks. So the scientists used brain scanners to look at what was going on inside people's minds when they let their mind drift. And the thing is, although they were deliberately not doing anything with their minds, their minds were a very, very long way from being inactive. There was a lot of stuff going on. And so what was actually happening while they were trying to think of nothing was the brain was playing back the sequence that they'd just been practicing at 20 times the speed of what was going on when they were practicing it for real. So if they were managing to say practice the sequence five times within one 10 second physical practice, that would mean their brain would be rehearsing it 100 times during the actual um, time when they were resting and supposedly doing nothing. And if you like this, this is what the channel is all about. I'm always looking to find new ideas from different fields or new research that can be really helpful to your music, but which you might otherwise just not be aware of. So the study has showed that there's really great potential here for these breaks where you literally just do nothing for 10 seconds. There's great potential for this to really accelerate your physical music practice. But thinking about it just my, my thoughts, no scientific stuff here. I think there's two other really important things that this can do as well. So first of all, it's allowing you, in fact, it's not even just allowing you, it's requiring you to just take a time where you're not trying hard to concentrate for a bit. And this can be really important because effective practice requires you to concentrate, to focus really hard. And there's only so much that you can do of that without taking a break. So when you're doing this time just to let your brain doing do more, you're allowing yourself to replenish those focus levels so you're potentially able to go harder in the rest of your practice time. And then there's also the fact that just taking a break and doing nothing is really good for just relaxing your muscle tension, you know, just letting all your muscles loosen up because they can get really tight during practice and that is not good for your playing. So by doing these little breaks which are aimed from the research at just getting the brain going faster and getting more you know, reps in terms of the thing you're practicing, I think we've got potential added benefits too, to improving your concentration for the practice session, maybe even being able to have longer practice sessions as a result, and just staying more relaxed, which is going to help all your physical movements. And by the way, if that was really helpful, what I've just shared with you, then please click the like button so this video can spread to more people. Thanks. So how do we use this in practice? Well, the research had these cycles of 10 seconds practice and 10 seconds rest, but we don't know whether that is the best way to do it. This was just the thing that they happened to test out. So there is no guaranteed research finding here that 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off is the best way to do things. So I think you want to experiment. I think having a whole practice session where you're constantly breaking things into just 10 second cycles is is probably a bit much so i would use these breaks maybe a little bit less frequently 10 seconds seems like a pretty good length to me though where i might go for the full-on 10 seconds on 10 seconds off is if you're practicing something 
short, you know, compact uh, little phrase, something nice tight exercise, and it's really intense. So that might be a great thing to do for a small bit of your practice. But otherwise, maybe just practice for a little bit longer and then take these 10 second breaks you know, every minute or something, or you know, when, when you're changing things, just experiment, see, see what seems to work for you. And the other thing is just to remind you that when you do this, you are literally doing nothing in those breaks. So just closing your eyes is a good thing to do, um, deliberately relaxing your muscles, and just, just let yourself sit there for 10 seconds. It's not about trying to do mental practice in that time. And it's not about just reflecting on what, what went well in those 10 seconds where you were physically practicing and what you might want to change. It's literally shut your eyes is a good thing. You don't have to, but I think that's a nice way to just tell yourself I'm doing nothing now. Shut your eyes, just breathe and relax the muscles for 10 seconds. And added bonus again, if you're focusing on relaxing your muscles, that is essentially putting you in a, in a doing nothing thinking state. So I think that will work really well. So having just said that this is not about reflecting on the practice that you've just done, I just want to talk a little bit about how these things go together, because you might have heard me say that reflecting on what we're practicing is really important, and it is. And I think these two things go hand in hand. It's just that we want to do them separately. So what's going on here is when you take a break and you just let your mind drift, eyes closed, mind is just drifting, your brain is going through repetitions of you know, the neurons that need to fire for this thing you're practicing 20, at 20 times the speed. So what it's doing is it's rehearsing the motion you've just done again and again, 20 times faster than you would do physically. But it's exactly the same motion. When we're reflecting after practicing a bit, what we're doing is thinking, well, what, what might we want to do different? What went well this time? What was not so good? What might I change? What did I notice? So that is also hugely useful but it's about what you might change. So I think these things go, go well together because if you do want to change stuff, if there are things you could be doing better, that just closing your eyes and drifting here is not gonna get you there. It's just gonna keep you rehearsing the same stuff. So time reflecting after bigger chunks of practice, how much I might want to do this, what might I want to change, um, really helpful, or you might even need, might, ah, you might even want to uh, mix these up. Maybe you do a bit of practice and then you let your mind drift for 10 seconds, and then you do a bit of practice and then you reflect for five seconds maybe on, well, what do I want to change? Is there something I do differently? And then you practice again and then you drift. So you might be mixing up this reflecting and adapting and the closing your eyes and just getting that accelerated thing on what you've just practiced. So I've now got one quick bonus tip for you and a fun fact. So the bonus tip is that another way to get more out of your practice is to take about a 20 minute rest period after a practice session. So this could be a 20 minute nap or it could just be just sitting and again, letting your mind drift, whatever. And this is a separate thing, this longer rest period after a practice session is over, helps your memory and your learning, but it does it in different ways from this, just taking 10 seconds with your eyes closed. So if that's available to you, consider that. And the fun fact is that the scientist who did this research study is one aptly named Leonard Cohen. So he's not the musician, he's a neuroscience, but I think that's a great, great connection in this case. If you want a bigger practice structure to fit this tip into, then check out my Practice Multiplier course, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Otherwise, check out the practice advice in this other video of mine. I think it pairs really well with the 10 second break idea that we've talked about here. I've been Mark Morley Fletcher. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.